Hey everybody, welcome to Bestie Book Reviews. I'm here with my bestie, Mandy. And I'm here with my bestie, Jessica. So it's that time of the week. It's time for us to do our one minute book recs. This is where we go over all the books we read this past week with one minute synopsises for each book. That's always a mouthful. Yeah, it is. It is. You talk okay. Too much. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so before we get started with that, Mandy, what do we want to tell? The well, hit that, sub hit that subscribe button. And if you have not checked out our October TBR video, make sure you go do that because we're giving away some free books from this in that video. And all you have to do is just go watch that video, like it, make sure you've subscribed and then comment on the video and you'll be in there to win. All right. So let's talk about our week. Um, mine was a little crazy. I got six books in this week. How was your week? I got five books in. I had a really good reading week, which makes uh, picking. Oh, your top books yeah. of the month hard. Yeah, it's going to make it very difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like the last always. week, just really. The thing is, is we choose our top five, up. right? Yes. If you have more than five, you always say, you're always like, can I have six? Can I have eight this month? Can I have I know, that's what I said. I think you're going to need eight this month. <laughs> Let's okay. talk about books. Let's go for it. You're first. I'm first. Okay, so the first book I read this week was is one that's really pop like it's it's shining on tiktok right now and i hate to pick up really really popular books but this one deserves the hype that it's getting right now and that is lights out by Navessa allen i think it's Navessa. Navessa. we're going with Navessa. um i've had this book on my shelf for quite a long like in my on my shelf on my kindle for a long time and i haven't read it yet um, until this week I picked it up. So this is about Allie and Josh. So Allie is a trauma nurse at the hospital and she, she is married to her job. She is dedicated to her job. She lives with her cat. Her cat is Fred the cat. He is like a pivotal point. He's just, he is so important to the story. Anyhow, um, Allie has this, uh, She's on mask talk on TikTok and there's this one guy she loves to watch and he wears the mask and he does suggestive things and she is just, there's just something about this guy and she just really likes it. So she sends a picture of it to her hookup buddy and she's like, hey, can we try this? And he's like, um, Allie, I haven't heard from you in two months. I've moved on. I'm dating somebody. But the guy that she shows it to is roommates with Josh and she, he he's like one day he's Josh is like have you talked to Allie and he's like yeah finally she stopped ghosting me oh and this is what she wants to do well Josh sees what she wants to do and goes huh well I'm that TikToker so let me stalk her and show up at her house in a mask and uh see what happens and so it kind of progresses from there but Josh I mean, even though he's got these weird tendencies, he's the son of a serial killer. So he is a um, recluse and he lives alone because he's afraid of becoming like his father. And, or he lives with his, his roommate, his buddy, but he's, he just doesn't want to be out and about. But he's also a, a tech guru as well. So um, he's a hacker of some kind. So he actually, at the heart of him, he has a cinnamon roll. And the things he does, like there's a snowstorm one day and she doesn't know his identity yet. So he picks her up from work after... 20 hours because there was like a shooting or something and drives her home, gives her the uh, gun and a knife to protect herself, but he won't talk to her because he doesn't want her to hear his voice because she knows who he is, uh, who Josh is. And so he drives her home so she would be safe and he packs her snacks. I mean, come on. Do you have a mask? Kink? This is it. I gave it four and a half stars. I really, really, really liked this. This was fun. I listened to this on my drive home from Seattle when I was stuck in traffic for hours because of that shooting at Everett. So when they shut down the highway. Freeway, but yes. It was a freeway. Yes, it was freeway. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. My next book is one that was sent to me by one of our subscribers. And she said, mm -hmm. actually, I think like almost to quote her, she said, I know you don't like this type of book. <laughs> It's one of my favorites, so if you give it a try, that'd be great. And so I decided I'd give it a try. So let's okay. talk about it. 
All right. So we have Unfurl by Elodie. Elodie Hart? Am I saying? I don't know. Uh, it's either name? Elodie or Elodie. I, I don't know. Yeah. One of the two. Yeah. So this is about Belle. Belle is 22 years old and she is still a virgin. And for whatever reason, she just feels like this is like the one thing holding her back in life and she needs to get rid of her virginity, but she doesn't know how she wants to go about doing it. And she learns that her really hot, her parents really hot neighbor Rafe actually owns the sex club. And she decides to just look into it online one day to see what it's all about. And she discovers that they have this program called unfurl and it is for women who want to lose their virginity in like a, safe environment that is going to guarantee to be like a great experience for them so she decides to sign up and Rafe who finds out that she's signed up for it is not like exactly thrilled that that was my timer I don't know if you oh, heard sorry. it um, he's not exactly thrilled that because like more than one guy participates in this, so there's three of them and he's one of them. And then he is not really thrilled to learn that somebody else has been tapped to do the actual deed. Mm, so we have okay. age gap in here. We have a little BDSM in here. So if you watch the channel, you know, like sex clubs is really not my thing. But one of the main reasons is because I don't, I like the alpha possessive. I don't like the whole, like, sure, let's share her with everyone. Like, I yes. like them mine. So I did really like how Rafe stepped up to that a little bit in this book. So I rated it four stars. I did enjoy it. So, yeah. Yeah, good. Awesome. It's, it's not quite, yeah, it's it's because there's not the, the whole, like, a lot of, sure. yeah. 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 Good. Glad you like that. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Just a side note. She is Catholic. And so she has a lot of the, there's a lot of talk about like the Catholic guilt and things like that. So if that's something you don't want to read, then just an FYI that is in here. I was yeah. raised Catholic, so I wasn't really offended by anything, but I am not still part of the Catholic church. Like I'm mainstream Christian. No, I guess you would call it. So I don't know. Yeah, non-denominational is the mm -hmm. right word. Isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I don't know. I can think. But what I'm trying to say is maybe my my views are a little like if I was still rooted in the Catholic faith, I might have been more like bothered by it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. throwing that out there. I think people need to kind of know that before they go into a book like that. Yeah. Too, yeah. When it deals so much with that. Okay. All right. What's All right. your next one? So the next book that I picked up for the week is Jasper Vale by Devney Perry. This is book four in the Edens. And I did that because Devney actually gave us book six while we were in Seattle. And I'm like, I gotta get, I gotta, I That's wanna get to book that six one. that we got? Yes. I have several of them on my shelf. I know. You have two, right? Of the Garnet Flats ones? Or of the, not the, the Edens? I think so. They're you have the my Bell, favorite. The special edition. I you have my read. favorite one, which is the second one in the series, which is the one that's green that you have. Um, Juniper Hill. That is my favorite out of the Eden so far. But let's talk about this one because this one is really good. So this is book four, like I said. And this one is about Jasper and Eloise. So if you've read these, you can read this as a standalone. Um, but just give you a little context. So Eloise is the sister um, to all of the Eden kids. And she runs the family's... Um, uh, it's like a, it's like a hotel. It's like a, the inn at, in this little tiny town. And she is waiting for her parents to hand it over to her. And it actually is called the Eloise. So uh, it was named after her grandmother, or great grandmother or something. So she's waiting for her parents to hand it over to her because their parents are very wealthy. The family owns the town and, and the, the parents tend to give their businesses to their kids. So Jasper is the trainer for the guy from the book before. He's a, a boxer and Jasper is his trainer. And he moved to this little town to um, help train his buddy. So uh, at the end of book three or whatever that was, yep, three, they're in Vegas at the big boxing event. And so this takes place right after that. Eloise is with her twin sister. They're in Vegas. They're drunk. And Jasper shows up. She's got a thing for Jasper. 
And you know, what happens in Vegas when you get drunk and there's a guy that you have a thing for? You get married. You get married. Yes. So they get married in Vegas. Yes, they get married in Vegas. And then they go home and she doesn't want anybody to know because she's afraid that her parents won't hand over the business to her because of that, which then it turns into it comes, the cat gets let out of the bag and then they have to pretend to actually be married and live together for a while. So then there's some forced proximity. I gave it four stars, loved it, loved the premise. I, I really do enjoy Devony. Like there, Devony Perry, when we met her, she's a sweetheart. Um, she's, she seems like she'd be a fun girl to go hang out with on the farm. She's just cute. And I was, I was like, she's adorable. And I love everything I've read by Devony Perry. She is always no less than four stars for me. So I, I love this. This is good. Okay. Okay. What else do you have? My next book is an arc that I got and it, this book is out now, so okay. you can go grab it yourself. It is the fourth book in the Off Limits Lovers series. It's Scandalous Lover by Laura Townsend. Okay. So we have Naomi and Naomi is a social media influencer and this is how she makes her living and she's done very well with it. And she is in her early 30s now and she has not been in a relationship or anything like that. And she realizes she kind of has to start to change some of her things to stay relevant. And so she decides to go to speed dating. And so she's at speed dating. She sits down at this long, like, you know, table. And then the women are all sitting down. The men come in. And when she looks up to see who's sitting across from her, it is Sam, who is her brother's best friend. And he, along with three of the other guys, own this island resort. And he just happens to be in town and he's trying to find the one. So he shows up to speed dating. And this is how they reconnect. They end up having like a little fling that evening. And then he heads back and they don't see each other for a little while. And in the meantime, something happens with um, Naomi's social media account and she basically gets canceled. And so she feels like she's lost everything. So she kind of, you know, runs off to the island to try and figure out what to do. And her and her brother don't have a really great relationship. And she they just don't really ever talk. And so she runs into Sam, obviously, there. And things start to rekindle between the two of them. But Sam has reasons that he feels that he can't really risk having a relationship with Naomi and upsetting her brother. And there, it's kind of all revealed. But this really did a great job of exploring, like, social media and how mm -hmm. it impacts lives in mm -hmm. ways we don't really think about and just people's self-worth. And so even though this was, like, a romance story, it really had some depth to it. And I really, I really, really enjoyed this one. So yeah. I rated it five stars. I love mm -hmm. Brother's Best Friend when it's done right. And this was definitely done right. Yeah. I don't like it when... It's just like, I don't know how to explain it, but brother's I, best friend can either go really well yeah. or it just doesn't work for me. So this think, one goes really well. I think with brother's best friend, it's you're telling me they can't be together because it's his best friend, but why? Like yes. the, the, the reason has to be legit, not just because it's her brother's friend. I mean, that's just kind of ridiculous. Yeah. So, and this has a good reason why Sam feels like this is a line he shouldn't cross. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the next book that I read is Morning Wood by Heather M. Ordron. We picked this up in Seattle. I laughed. You just my really gosh. knocked it out of the park with reading the books from Seattle. While well, this I whole week I was did. just panicking about all these well, arts you, that you had I arts. needed to get through. Yes, you had. Been I felt arts. horrible. I don't know what <laughs> happened. I like didn't think I signed up for very many, and the ones they did all like. Right. All, this, that's how it always works. With yeah. They all come in the same week. So, okay, let me tell you about hey. this one. I am not one for rom-coms. I don't tend to laugh in books. I don't know why, but the comedy doesn't tend to get me. This one had me laughing out loud and then running to my husband to tell him what was happening. So, um, and he, he was just so thrilled about that. So this is Morningwood. So this is about Whitney and Wyatt. So Whitney and Wyatt hooked up previously. Um, I think it was like two years before this book starts um, at an event, uh, it was a friend's wedding and they hooked up and um, it was against a dumpster, we get told that. And then they haven't seen each other since. So he is, Wyatt is cousins with Whitney's best friend's husband. So the, that was the wedding that they were at. And so um, Whit has like 
avoided him for years. She and her family run the funeral home in town. And she gets kind of screwed in a certain situation where she's hired people to come in and um, remodel the chapel. And they stole her money and took off. Now, Wyatt has just moved to, to this little tiny town and he is going to... Um, He's a carpenter. And so his buddy actually, or his cousin actually gets him hired on without Whitney realizing who he is to finish the chapel. And Whitney has this little girl who is like Wednesday Adams. I mean, it's, it's hilarious. This little girl is around death all the time with her grandparents and with her mom and she's used to it. And it kind of reminded me of um, my girl in a way, because, you know, without all the sadness, uh, because you had, <laughs> because you had a little girl who grew up, like her favorite thing is the glass eyeballs that she gets to play with from the ladies, it was from a lady who died, like they got into the state sale. It is hilarious. It is so fun. Um, this was a four star book. This was a lot of fun. They have this chemistry. He will do anything to have her and, and she's just kind of hesitant because of her daughter. And so he really steps up and I just, I really liked it. It was cute. It was so funny. It probably did a crappy job of explaining it is what my brain's telling me right now. But it was so <laughs> cute. <laughs> so, but you, do, I would check. I don't know if there's triggers in this one. I mean, I don't know if there's like a trigger list for this one. If there is, I would check it if you have triggers around certain death things. Because we do still, I mean, they're they're working in a funeral home. So we do still see like a, a, a mom come in who's lost their baby recently. Mm -hmm. and, and like I think it was a two-year-old or something. So there are certain things that happen in here. So if you have a trigger around that, I would definitely check. And if you can't find triggers, message us and I'll let you know what it is if you tell me what the trigger is. So, yeah. All right. Okay. Sometimes it's hard to talk about triggers because those can be huge spoilers. So yes. Yeah. If you ever and have questions one... about any books we talk about, feel free to email us. Bestiebookreviews yeah. at gmail.com. The, the <laughs> and we're always happy to help. Triggers tend to be listed on books, but this is a rom-com. And so I'm like, I don't know, but it's a rom-com that deals with death. Yes. And, you know. Well, so. no, I know triggers are listed, but sometimes people, yeah. like, you can read a trigger and you're like, but. Oh, yeah, but you don't know what it is. Yeah, exactly. I need a little more info to know if it's going to be yes. a book I want to read or not. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So my next book was another arc and it is also out. This okay. is number three and the Boston Irresistible Billionaires. And this is undeniably infatuated. And I um, researched and figured out how to say Jay Shaman's oh. name. So I've been saying you're wrong for a very long time. So okay. undeniably infatuated by Jay Shaman. And so this is oh so good so this is a true forbidden love story i love forbidden love but only when it's really forbidden and i think like uh, we were just talking about brother, brother's best friend i don't really find brother's best friend truly a forbidden love like there has to be a reason this one has a, this is not brother's best friend but the forbidden love part is so good so we have stone who is a doctor and he has not really taken his life seriously. He's kind of lived off of his name and stuff. And something almost happened. And it just really was this wake up call for him. So he goes to Florida to his yacht where he's going to just kind of recruit, recoup on his life. And when he gets there, he gets attacked by this girl that's staying on his boat. <laughs> and it turns out it's Tensley, who is also escaping things because she's quite the famous, um, Hollywood star and paparazzi's just been all over her and she just wants a break. So she goes to his boat because she doesn't, he'll be there. It's like, it's not a boat, it's a yacht. And she's staying there and he shows up and it freaks her out. She doesn't know who he is. So she attacks him. <laughs> and then he's like, what the heck are you doing on my boat? Mm -hmm. Well, he's getting ready to sail away for 10 days and she begs him to let her come with him because of this. And he's like, fine. And his brother and her broke up a couple years ago, but his brother is not over her, like, oh. at all, okay? And he falls for her. Now, okay. this is, like, really forbidden love because him and his brother have a great relationship, and it's his brother. Like, this is something, like, this isn't just, like, a friend that you're going to lose. Like, you can't really lose your, you lose your brother, but your brother's still going to be there. Like, he's mm -hmm. still part of your family. Mm -hmm. You have other brothers and parents like oh I just loved it and he tries really hard not to fall for her okay 
And we fast forward even a couple years later and Forrest is still hung up on Tensley, but Tensley has a stalker and some things happen that force her and Stone together. Oh my God, it was so good. Okay. Five stars. Okay. Awesome. You will see this in my top books. Okay. Okay. Really good. Cool. All right. So the next book I read is a mafia duet. I just read book one because I haven't been able to get to book two yet. I mean, I started it yesterday, but I haven't been able to finish it in time for this, but that's okay. So this is Malevolent King and it is by Mila Kane. This is about Sophia and Nicola. Sophia is basically a mafia princess in the Italian world. She's um, has a very controlling father. She's uh, basically just there for his enjoyment for like, you know, I'm going to marry you off to so-and-so and that's going to, you know, improve our standings or whatever. So her dad is actually very cruel to her. Um, and she's like a little bird kept in a cage and she hates it. And then we have Nikolai. So something happened five years before the book starts where Nikolai, who is, um, goes by Nico, he is the, he's a part of the Bratva and his dad is the head of the Bratva. And he and her have this meet cute that we see later in the book five years ago. And something happens between them. We're not sure what happens. And then now we are five years in the future. And he has been taken captive. His father has been killed. He's been taken captive by the um, by by Sophia's family. And he is being held down in the basement. Um, first, they bring him back to the compound. And he gets out of the car that they have him tied in. And then he takes Sophia um, as captive. And they go on the run together. And then something happens where he gets held down in the basement. And then things happen between him, between them. Um, he is like the, he is a psychopath. He is completely crazy. He talks about that last little crack in the brain and, and he is, he is nuts, but he knows he's putting off that persona. And so, you know, how nuts is he really? And then you have her, she, when she sees him, like she wants to hate him, but he's the only person who can really see who she is on the inside. And so I really love this. I gave it a four stars at this point. Um, I'm really wanting that last book it does end on a cliffhanger and it will crush your little soul but hmm. it should be made better in the next book which is why i had to jump to the next book but then i had to put it down because we have a book we have to finish okay okay thank you for that you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> all right yes. my next book was an alc that i got i just don't like elk um oh. it's called buy a boyfriend by everly ashton interesting to note the audio, the book is already out and the audio was supposed to come out, but I can't actually find the audio and all the graphics list a different narrator. So I actually emailed the PR company and it was confirmed that the narrator on there is not correct. So I don't know if they're like redoing some graphics really quick and then it, we're going to see it out there. Oh. So anyway, right. okay, that's Let's just hear about it. my little warning right there, I guess. Okay. okay so we have, um, so this is narrated by Maxine Mitchell and Lee Samuels. It's fantastic narration. They do a great job of bringing the characters to life. So I absolutely loved the narration. We have Isla and Travis. So Travis gets auctioned off at a senior <laughs> fund, a senior like senior center fundraiser, and he is one of the bachelors that is auctioned off. His grandma kind of forces him, like literally, he kind of gets pushed out onto the stage. Well, Isla's grandma bids on him and she's like, grandma, you're on a fixed income. What are you doing? And she's like, oh, you only live once. Well, it <laughs> turns out that the grandmas were kind of in on something and Isla's grandma buys him for Isla. So they go on their date. It doesn't really work out that great. And then Isla shows up to her new job and Travis is her employer. So we go from there. Uh, this, I gave, I rated it four stars. There were a few little things that just kind of kept it from being a five star for me. I loved how the book started off and I don't know. I, I did really enjoy, but enjoy it. You know, just sometimes there's just something that's kind of missing to make it that five star. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. But still highly enjoyable. And when you can find the audio, I recommend listening to it. <laughs> right. When it shows back up again. Yes. Yeah. All right. So the next book I read was, it's a Halloween novella, kind of. It's Lauren Beale. 
She kind of pushed it a little too far with this one for me, but let's talk about that one. So this is Don't Stop by Lauren Beale. This is about uh, Raina and Dalton. This is a novella. This is a shorter one. Um, so this one, so Raina is a recovering um, uh, addict and she's living in a halfway house, but she um, likes to hitchhike and maybe go get a fix every once in a while, even though she's not supposed to. And then she, and she has a, a pension for um, taxidermy. And then you have Dalton, who is a little on the odd side. He likes to, he paints like he paints inside houses like the walls and stuff for, for people that's how he makes his money but he has a penchant for blood he likes blood and what happens when you put two people together where one likes tax taxidermy and one likes blood it just gets weird it gets really weird and gross um and you know it's dark and it's crazy and it happens on halloween <sighs> it's okay it's okay it was three stars um, not that I didn't enjoy it when I read it. I did. I was like, I think we're pushing the envelope now. There's some things that happened in this one where I was like, I'd heard about them, so I knew it was coming. But I was like, oh, my, that's supposed to be hot? Because it was just nasty. Just nasty. So, check the triggers if you read it. So, so Warren Beale found your limit. <laughs> Good yep. for her. Good for her. I know. Bravo. Thank you. It wasn't the mayonnaise. It was this one. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. <laughs> so moving on. Okay. Okay. My next book was another ALC. Fantastic okay. narration by Stephanie Rose and Chris Chambers. Okay. This is um, the start of Rolling Hills series. So this is the one I want by Shel Sloan. Okay. And so the book starts off with Wes. He's a pro football player. He just decided to retire at the end of the current season. He's just made that announcement. He comes home and finds that his wife is standing there with a whole bunch of suitcases. And he's like, what's going on? And she's like, I'm leaving you. We're getting divorced. Here's the papers. Goodbye. And he's like, what about our three kids? Their oldest is like 11. And then their youngest is like four or five, I think. And she's like, you can have them basically okay so oh my gosh heartbreaking way to start the story but do not worry about Wes because Betsy is going to come and save the day there is a nanny on her way so we have Wes who just doesn't really know what to do and he um ends up going to visit his parents so we do have small town where his parents live and they have a new tenant in their house like next door or something and that's Betsy and it kind of feels like maybe mom has been working on some ideas here a little bit. And Betsy ends up not, her job ends up not really working out that she has. And so she agrees to be a nanny and Wes like moves his family to this small town and everything. And so that's where, where it kind of starts. I really, really love this one. Four and a half stars. It was really good. And then there, he has several friends who I'm, thinking are going to get their own book. And the next book is Oliver. And Oliver is their friend who falls in love very easily and has proposed to like 12 different women who all say no because he asks like very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so he has the next book and it ends with him going to Vegas with someone. So I'm very excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like a Vegas wedding happening to me. Oh, also, a trope that I did not realize is actually a trope. Gray sweatpants. Oh, yeah. 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 It's more than a trope. It's the gift that keeps on giving as long as the person wearing is giving. Maybe that's a video. I don't know that I recognized it in books, though. I don't pay enough attention. It's referenced. It's referenced she, in almost every book. She calls them criminal gray sweatpants. And then there's another one where she makes a comment about, and those damn gray sweatpants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, we have them in my house, but my teenagers keep stealing them from my husband. And I'm like, that is mommy's gift. Put it back. Quit stealing, quit stealing it. That's like. You've taken this conversation <laughs> in a, a, a yeah. Oh. We need to move on. Okay. okay, I'm out. Okay, my last one. Uh was another one I got in Seattle. 
Brooklyn Air by Serena Damn Brown. You. I, I know you love it. I back in 2020 when I started reading a lot of books, I read like I binged Serena Bone, but I skipped this one because the hero in this one is the owner to the hockey team and not an actual hockey player. And so I was like, eh, I don't really want to read that. Well, I had to go back and read it now. So <laughs> because I like the hockey versus the billionaire. I mean, come on, guys. Um, so this is about Becca and Nate. Becca is uh, Nate's office manager and he manages the Brooklyn Bruiser or not manages, he owns the Brooklyn Bruisers and he's this like he's, he's, a, he's a tech geek is what he is and he just happened to make it big and um, Becca has been with him from the beginning when he started his little business and it just kind of blew up and so this is their story um, at the end of the book before this I think this is like book this is like book five or something in the book Brooklyn Bruises four or five Becca falls on the ice and hits her head and gets a concussion so Nate um is in love with her he has been for a while and so he decides that he's going to help her because the concussion is not getting any better and she lives in a tiny apartment with her sister her sister's boyfriend and their new baby and so he moves her into his big old house in Brooklyn and um you know it's got like AI and all the stuff you know taking care of things in the house um and come to find out it's more than just a concussion it's a situation where after a concussion, like your, your equilibrium, your brain, like your brain is not connecting. You have to like retrain it, how to, to do things. And so she ends up staying with him for a while. So there's some forced proximity um, and there's other things going on. There's this push pull between them with their relationship. So four stars. It was good. You know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that was it. That was my last one. Okay. Okay. Like to point out, I'm now, I'm, all my, I was never late on anything. No, you were. But I, I finally made it through my arc crisis. I was getting really <laughs> nervous. I only apply for arcs that I know that I'm going to like. Like I just, okay. I'm not. I read some. Is anybody on Threads? Like Threads is like it's really like toxic and negative most of the time, or at least that's what keeps popping up on our feed. Mm -hmm. And I have read some crazy stuff where this lady like went to her book club and she was like, I applied for like all these arcs. She had like 40 arcs and she was only going to pick a couple to read or something. And no. I'm like, like, that's not how those work. And that's what the person was complaining about. She was like, holy crap. Yeah. I'm like, if you choose, like you are agreeing to be a part of an author's marketing team to help them by reading this book and doing this, like that's not okay. No. So I think you're very serious and I only apply for stuff that I know that I'm going to like. Mm -hmm. And I've taken a couple where somebody's messaged and asked us to do something and I will do that sometimes. Um, I try to be picky though, because I only want to do read stuff that I know I'm going to like so I can positively promote it, you yep. know? But yeah. Whew, that was rough though. I was really nervous that I wasn't going to make you that. are because you'd call me and be like, I don't think I'm going to get through these. I've got to get them. I'm like, then stop talking to me and go read your book. Was one of those things though, where I get like a little, I don't know, like when I yeah, have a really so long list of things to do, I just, that you couldn't focus on it. Yes. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yep. So, okay. Right. So Mandy survived the arc storm 2024. <laughs> yes. But I'm reading a new one. And you guys are going to want to tune in next week for mm -hmm. One Minute Book Rex. I'll have two of them. They're part yep. of the series. Oh, so good. Yep. So good. Yep. Okay. okay. All right. Give them the spiel. Well, make sure you hit that notification button and please subscribe. We really love that. It makes our hearts happy. Mm -hmm. And check back on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for new videos from us. And, you know, we do like to do some surprise videos on Wednesdays. So if you have that notification button, you're good to go. Yeah. Hopefully. All right. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.